Hi, I'm Vicki Wessling here with City Speaks. City Speaks is a show that's brought to you by Mayor Wilfred Rosas for the residents of the city of Dunkirk and the surrounding community. And we're here because there are important issues going on in our area. Today we have our election uh, commissioners. We have uh, Brian Abrams and we have Norm Green. And you guys are here because there's a lot happening. There are a lot of questions out there regarding this upcoming election. Tell me a little bit about how are you how are you planning for all this? Well, there's a lot of questions because of uh, COVID-19 is a big hurdle. I mean, we have to change how we vote and processes. And along with that, with the um, advancement of absentee voting and to allow people an opportunity to not come to the poll sites, we have to ramp up for a different style of voting. So it's kind of a two-part uh, method to make sure that we are available, ready, and, and can accommodate all the voters. Um, so we're looking at it from both angles and saying, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that people have the opportunity to vote in a system that's comfortable for them? Okay, now you say that, but you know, there's, there are questions out there about absentee ballots. Are we gonna do mail-in voting? Will it all be in-person voting? Do you know? Well, certainly we know. Um, we will have uh, absentee voting for anyone who is physically unable to go to the polls, as as always. So anybody that's going to be out of the county, as always. Anybody that's a caregiver for someone that's physically unable to go to the polls, as always. And then uh, anybody who is... Uh, who is sick or fearful of being sick, and that would be that would cover COVID-19. So anybody that uh, wanted to uh, vote by absentee would go to the Board of Elections website, votechautauqua.com, would download an application, and would check off temporary illness, and that covers the COVID-19. Uh, a lot of the critics say, "Hey, you know, not everybody's sick, but." You know, potentially everybody is sick. This is a pandemic, first one of our lifetime. And uh, we uh, accept the fact that some people can't go to the polls. Maybe it has to do with, you know, Im immune deficiencies. Um, maybe it's just fear, whatever. Uh, they have a right to, uh, to cast a ballot from, from home safely. Okay, so now this is for absentee balloting. What about... Uh, the mail-in ballots, are there going to be, have you considered just sending out or ballots to all the registered voters for mail-in ballots? We would follow a directive if it came from the governor saying that that was part of our responsibilities, like it was for the primary in June. Uh, but to date, uh, we're waiting on his decision. If that's the order that comes down, we will accommodate the voters in that way. But at this point, we aren't uh, responsible for a mail-in process, so we will just allow the absentee process to fold forward like we discussed and uh, allow anybody who wants to vote in that direction, go to get an absentee ballot, send it to us, and we'll make sure you get a ballot this fall. Okay, so uh, if, if uh, most people, didn't, if people say, I want an absentee ballot, they can do that. How are you covering the cost of that? I mean, isn't that gonna add, hasn't that added uh, a financial burden? Uh, we have uh, received uh, CARES Act money from the federal government, uh, which, is, which will cover any uh, uh, unanticipated costs uh, relating to uh, absentee balloting for people due to COVID-19. Okay, so, that, so that's taken care of. Now, one of the things that, that has come out because of all the things that are happening, they've talked about uh, drop boxes for the absentee ballots. That's something that uh, we've heard about also. Um, the problem with the drop box is the uh, two parties are responsible to make sure that the ballot from every point from our, into our possession to the point where it's uh, counted has to basically have security measures that would allow both um, parties to understand that we can take that process and make sure it works. If you start going remote with boxes and you start doing things totally different than what we've done in the past, you'd have to create real strong security measures, something that would uh, basically make sure that the process doesn't have any holes in it and how Norm usually calls it uh, chain of custody. You gotta have the chain of custody and to have anything remote and to have anything away from our current system would take some effort and would take some cost to initiate this. So what we'd like to say is, uh, while that, you know, obviously drop boxes uh, are not a, uh, off the charts kind of thing, but it is something that would definitely change how we 
hold on to it and secure ballots. And at this point, we're not uh, doing those, but we do say that you can go to the early voting and drop off your absentee ballot there, or you can come to the poll site uh, on election day and drop off the ballot there, or you can put it in the mail and mail it back to us. And obviously those are the three methods we currently have that uh, we hope that people can uh, participate in and get the ballot back. So in addition to what Brian said, this can be done by an agent. It doesn't have to be done by uh, the, the person themselves who is fearful about going out uh, and fearful of the, uh, how the mail is going to handle it. So an agent, the next door neighbor, a friend, a relative uh, could take the ballot, completed ballot, bring it to the Board of Elections, bring it to the early voting site at the, uh, at the fairgrounds or at the Lakewood uh, at the Lakewood Mall, or on election day, bring it again, as Brian said, to the okay, poll now, site. Okay, now you say that, and immediately I see fraud, fraud, fraud going up. Um, I mean, if I give you my ballot and you say, I want to check that, maybe I'm going to change that sucker. <laughs> no, um, a secure ballot is, is sealed and signed by you. Anything short of that would give us red flags that there was tampering done or something of that nature. So generally, um, somebody couldn't change your wishes. They would, they would definitely be breaking into your ballot, and then we would then know that it's been tampered with. So the ballot still has to be secured. The signature has to match your name in our, rec, you know, in our system, and we will double check it. So you handing it off to somebody else, if they do something of that nature, then we have a crime. We have an actual offense that we need to pursue. But in general, no, the end result still has to be what we currently have in absentee voting. It's just a little bit more this year. It's, we're doing the same process. We're just making it wider and, and providing it to more people. Okay, so uh, we really do need to dispel the, the myth, if you will, that there is fraud going on because, because you do have measures in place then to guarantee security of those things. And, so further, just... and further, we have prosecuted people in Chautauqua County for uh, ballot uh, uh, fraud. We, it's, it's happened and, and we're constantly on the lookout for it and we're constantly rejecting uh, absentee ballots that uh, uh, don't meet the minimum standards that uh, one would expect for a valid ballot. Okay. When is the deadline for someone to request an absentee ballot? When, they sh when should they request an absentee ballot? <laughs> as soon as possible. Because with <laughs> okay. this year, the, the volume that we're talking about, we definitely uh, would love people to participate early, right now, as a matter of fact, to starting today and starting, we will accept the uh, ballot application and uh, basically have it prepared and ready for our September 18th is the first day we'll be sending out ballots to individuals who have applied. Um, they can apply all the way up until the 9th uh, through the mail and then anything in person after that point uh, when people do that on occasion when they come to the thing and say I'm going to be out of town we say well we're having early voting which is nine days before so we also give them that opportunity if they're you know thinking that it's going to be too late or they're not going to be able to be part of the process we make sure we steer them in a direction that gets them somehow to participate in the process so you know we we try to make sure we look out for the customer and make sure that uh, Whatever is best for them, we will try to accommodate as quickly as possible. But if they are going to do the absentee ballot process this year, our recommendation is do it early and, and get your ballot back to us as quickly as possible. Okay, and so now uh, one of the things we, we've talked about for the absentee ballot, and then we don't know yet about mail-in, are poll workers. If we go to vote in person at the poll workers, we have early voting. Early voting starts when? It starts uh, nine days before the, 10 days, excuse me, before the... October 23rd. Okay, October 23rd, so early voting, October 23rd. And you'll have the, you'll have the sites listed or posted so that people can do their early voting. And we know the site. The site is the fairgrounds for anybody in Dunkirk. And they'll be open noon to five that first weekend of uh, early voting. Okay, will that be Dunkirk and Fredonia? No, just Dunkirk at the fairgrounds. And then our other early voting sites are the, are the uh, Chautauqua Mall and uh, the Board of Elections. Okay, so those three places, the uh, Fairgrounds, Chautauqua Mall, and Board of Elections. So there is early voting. It's going to start October 23rd. The poll workers, have you had to increase your number of poll workers? Um, increased this year we will increase because it's a presidential year and there'll be a large volume of turnout we're expecting maybe 70 percent turnout globally across the county um this is the year that it is all hands on deck so yes we uh 
will take this year and probably have a you know 20 percent increase in the need for poll workers okay and then additional training for those poll workers because now they're dealing with the the voting process of course but they won't be sitting at a table close together anymore they're going to have to have some space between them or wear masks and how do you have additional people who are going to make sure that the crowd control that the distancing all of those things are happening we absolutely are monitoring that we've we've purchased uh, uh, seals for the voting site so that people will know where they can stand so that uh, they're six feet apart. Uh, we've trained our election inspectors uh, about the proper procedures and about the cleaning procedures that has to take place uh, in between uh, voters. Anything that's touched uh, will not be allowed to be touched again without someone cleaning it. Uh, the styluses that uh, we use, electronic poll books are going to be new this year if we don't need enough new things, but we're, we're throwing another one in. <laughs> and, uh, and a stylus will be needed to uh, sign in and the stylus will be uh, will will not be used by the next person until it's been cleaned uh, we've ordered hundreds of uh, of more stylus uh, we got to be one of the biggest uh, 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 places in Chautauqua County that's consuming styluses and uh, you know so we we meet once a week and we talk about all the COVID-19 procedures and what we have to do and uh, and we've gotten it out and we've had to, we, we continue to have training and we continue to train our staff and we did have a dry run on this already on June 23rd, which we had to uh, uh, to implement all the COVID-19 procedures that were necessary. And now we're going to the big to the to the big election, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're confident that we're going to be ready. Okay, so now we we also have uh, with the uh, ballots that come into the mail. How do we if somebody changes their address? Now I know if they come into the poll site and they have, they're not listed, you know, they change their address, there's a process for figuring out who they are and where they belong and where they can vote. What do they do with an absentee ballot or with a mail-in ballot? Well, the application should clarify exactly where they currently live. So if you went online and got your form and sent it into the Board of Election and it doesn't match what we currently have on file for you, obviously at that point we would take a look at it and say, wait a minute, that's, they say they reside here. So we would update your records at that point okay. versus at the poll site, which is, you know, we get the correction if there's an affidavit ballot envelope, or we send you to the proper poll site to fill out your affidavit ballot there. So we have people moving all the time. We just have to update their records and make sure that they're voting the ballot that is where they currently reside. Right. I had a question uh, recently from a, a young woman. This is, she has never voted before. She's 19. Can she vote? Of course. Certainly. She's not registered. How do, what, when is her deadline for registering? That uh, is going to be uh, October, 9th also. October 9th, yes. So October 9th. You've got until October 9th to, to register to vote if, you're not, if you aren't currently registered. So anybody out there who is, who's never voted before and is not registered, that's the, time, that's the thing we need to do. So we have up until October 9th to register to vote. We have up until October... Uh, until September 9th to register to vote. Is that no, October 9th. October 9th to register to vote. Yeah. And the you know, uh, absentee ballots will be mailed out. On the September 18th, if you, if you fill out your application prior to that date, we'll spool them all together and then send them out on the 18th okay. for the very first day. And then after that, we'll do them on demand each day to make sure that we keep up and that if you're on the 21st or 22nd, we'll process it and get it back in the mail to you the same day we received. Okay. Just, just to add in, we don't go home at the end of the night unless all of the applications have been processed and a ballot has been put in. And we pride ourselves that on election, uh, on the day that we receive an, an application, that a ballot is gonna be turned around on that same exact day. But again, as we've already said, we really want people to apply just as quickly as possible, and we want them to have as much time as possible to uh, be able to get their ballot back to us if, if there's any breakdowns. Okay. So, and then we're, our early voting will begin on uh, October 23rd. That's correct. October 23rd for early voting. Regular voting day is November the 3rd. Will we have everything counted? Will we know at midnight November 3rd, who our next <laughs> president is or who our county executive is? Absolutely not. 
No. When will we know? <laughs> well, that, that's, the, that's sort of the problem, if you will, and it's not really a problem, that, that, but it right, is. Right, but that's the people concern. People want instant information and instant results. Well, if 20%, and I'm just using a number, of the individuals have mailed in their ballots, there's still 20% of the total of the election that needs to be added to the totals, and we have to wait by law. Um, seven days for the local ones, 13 for the military, and then open them up and start the process of adding to the election day totals. So individuals who could be in the lead on election night could definitely lose later because of the wide amount of individuals who are going to participate in the second part of the process the totals will be adding after November 3rd. So with that said, people are used to very much so watching votechautauqua.com election night reporting and going yay or aw, oh, too bad um, yeah. kind of reactions, but there's a large amount of votes that will still need to be added to the total that will definitely change. Th this is going to be a different year. Now, what is the percentage, if you know, of the typical absentee ballots? I mean, do you normally have enough, send out enough absentee ballots to make a difference in the outcome of the election? And has it, has it grown? Many, many, many years, oftentimes, the absentee ballots will decide election somewhere in the county. And so it's just not it's just not an unusual situation that you know it's two weeks later that we're uh, opening the ballots and we're and we're determining who a winner is. So that's not unusual. Uh, will be an unusual thing nationally. Uh, hard to say what's going to wow. what's going to take place, but there's that there's that potential. But in the end, you know, the election professionals of the United States of America will get it right. And we'll, you know, it may take time in some places. Uh, we're confident in our system. We're confident in our process that two weeks after the election, thereabouts, we're going to have an answer for you. Okay. Uh, but nationally, if it takes if it takes a month, it takes a month. And, but all we care about is that it's a true result, and that's what you'll get. I'm reminded of the 2000 election with the hanging chads in mm -hmm. in Florida. So we're so we're a little bit beyond that, right? What other kinds of things are, are going on? What other kinds of things are happening that you're concerned with now regarding the election? Do you have any anything out there in your mind that you think, boy, we've got to make sure we look out for this, this, or this? Well, that's kind of a long list. I mean, mm -hmm. we want to make sure, and we've got some great partnerships here in Stock County, that our poll sites are ready and available and allow us to do the things necessary to invite, you know, obviously, the voters in. Um, the health and well-being, like we touched on earlier, of the um, poll workers. Mm -hmm. the health and, and safety of the voters themselves. Uh, the entire process of, of combining a lot of individuals into one day into these 49 various poll sites throughout Stock County and doing it in a way that's keeping everybody safe. Um, we, we have a lot of those types of concerns with you know the cleanliness, cleaning, and the sterilization of our poll sites as we come and as we leave. So. I mean, Norm can really jump in. I'm touching on some of the things that we are constantly looking at to make sure that this whole event is as uh, safe as it can possibly be in the, you know, in the current climate we're dealing with. When we train our election inspectors, and that's the key to, you know, to everything, and, you know, we always train around the election day experience. Uh, it's not different than an amusement park. You know, we think that people need to go to the to vote and not walk away and say, oh my gosh, was that hard? Mm -hmm. And you know, and that you know, we have a, a pleasant experience in Chautauqua County while still uh, doing our job and making sure that democracy is served. Now, one of the things that typically uh, people do, parents will do, they'll bring their young children in so they can view the process and they kind of want to get them involved in it. What are you doing this year? Are you going to suggest that they not do that or is that even something that's come up? It hasn't come up, but uh, just to piggyback off what you just said, we have told our poll workers that, listen, we know how you love to socialize, and you get to see people for the first time that you haven't seen in quite some time, and it really is a social event. Uh, and this year, that isn't possible. You're going to have to process people through with all the spacing that we need and all the in, you know the, the individuals coming and going. Um, to the best of our ability, we are telling our poll workers that you know the socialization aspect of voting that they've come to enjoy and be part of we're, we're asking them not to. We're asking them to just satisfy the customer and, and make sure that you keep people in and out to the, the fastest possible so we can have as many people as individuals not have to wait and stay six feet apart and all the things that are going to slow down the process if we 
couple it together with additional things like mm -hmm. children coming or, you know, hanging around at the pole site and just kind right. of chatting kind of thing. Okay. Were you going to add to that? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. All right, because because I've I've got another another uh, another quick question here. One of the things that you guys are doing is that you're really involved and you really want to get the message out because there are concerns. Some of, some of the concerns are legitimate and some are just myths, if you will. Uh, you know, both everybody's saying it's going to be this or it's going to be that. You're going to be doing some PSAs, some public service announcements, letting people know what's going on. You're also going to be on. Uh, Dunkirk Access Spectrum 1301 on September 15th with the League of Women Voters. So, and at that time, I understand there are going to be some people who are going to be asking questions and kind of getting a better idea. What is the one message that you, if you only had one message to get out, what would it be to our voters this year? Well, not so much on the Democratic Election Commissioner, but it seems like it's the Democrats that are pushing hard for people to just stay home and stay safe and vote from home. You know, that'd be my that'd be my message. Uh, that that's really the the best way during a pandemic to uh, vote. But that being said, you know, we're going to accommodate people on however they want to vote. They want to vote in person on Election Day, then that's the way it's going to happen, and we're going to be ready and prepared for it. So, so you're suggesting that you know the the best possible thing, the best thing for the people as far as safety regarding because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. is to stay home and vote from vote from home. If I do that, can I be can I be assured that my vote will count? Yes, based on a couple of things. First off, um, you do it timely and you sign your envelope, and you seal your envelope, and you do your part, you can rest assured that your vote will count. Going into effect this year, based on the League of Women Voters um, oh, and uh, some of their suggestions, you'll be able to track your absentee ballot. You'll be able to go online, votechitaco.com, and see where you are in the process. And if there is a flaw within your absentee ballot, we will be putting it online, and we will be also sending you some sort of documentation or a form stating you have to correct this deficiency to make sure your vote counts. So there's like a extra layer of, uh, of uh, I'm not going to say enforcement, but it, of, of culpability for us to try to make sure that absentee votes, as they come to us, you've done your part. If you've not done your part in certain situations, we're going to reach back at to you and say, we need you to be a little bit more involved in the process. This is what's uh, deficient. Please come back and, and correct it so we can put you in the totals. Okay. So there'd be like a, like an added set of eyes. that's going to look at this. I think I've done everything I need to do. I've sealed my ballot. I've sent it in and I forgot to dot my T or something. Mm -hmm. I, I, my signature doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. When you see that, you're going to send that up and I'm going to go out and track my ballot and know where I am by going to ChautauquaToday.com? No, Vote Chautauqua. <laughs> oh, Vote Chautauqua. Sorry. It's a vote, different group. Yeah. <laughs> vote Chautauqua.com. Vote Chautauqua.com and I can track my ballot then and say, oops, I yep. made a mistake or you're going to contact me and we can get it fixed. How, what is the deadline for receiving that ballot back at, what, what is your deadline? When, do, when must absentee ballots be received back at the election headquarters? Well, seven days past the election, and if we have it in our possession and it's postmarked timely. What is timely? It has to be postmarked by a certain day. Well, there's still legislation, and I'm looking at Norm, that I believe what will happen is it will be the day of and the day after will be allowed as, post, as timely postmarks. Okay. And then as long as it physically gets to us by the seventh day after that point, that would be included, that would be it, make it a viable ballot. Okay. But the people that are playing Russian roulette are the people that are waiting to the last minute, getting a postmark at the last minute, and expecting the mail delivery service to deliver within the seven day period. You know, if you want your ballot to be counted, guaranteed that it's counted, then it needs to be mailed, you know, early as possible. And then you go online and you see, oh yeah, you received my application, it's going to tell you that online, it's going to tell you that the ballot's been received, and it's going to tell you that the ballot didn't have any problems. Or if it did have problems, it's going to list it. And that's not an or, we're also going to have that online, but we're also going to mail to everyone, and we're going to contact them by email if we have an issue. Okay, so you really have put some safeguards in place to make sure that every vote will indeed count. 
the, all the voter needs to do is, is the, right, the right thing. Complete your ballot, request a ballot on time, complete it when you get it, mail it back, track it online at VoteChautauqua.com. Right, great. And uh, it, it takes me a couple of times, but eventually I learn, right? <laughs> VoteChautauqua.com. And then you know if you've got a problem, your vote will be counted. If I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to wait, I want to see, I want to make sure there no nothing happens to this election, I'm going to wait and mail mine in on November 2nd. I'm really, I'm really might have, I, I, I might have a problem because the mail service now, we know there are some issues going on. You want to speak to that? Well, I, I think that you, you could have your ballot arrive to us late under those circumstances. Now, I don't know exactly what the lead time is or where you mailed them from, but there is concerns that, you know, the mail does take longer than it used to, and everybody, you know, understands that. So with that said, yes, the safeguards for the voter would be to not delay and to not, you know, uh, hesitate. Get your application, get your ballot, get it mailed back in, and be done with it long before you get anywhere near any of the deadlines. Okay. All right. You're going to do some PSAs. You're going to be on uh, September 15th. We're going to be airing this on uh, Dunkirk Access 1301 for this in, uh, for the week. Uh, it'll Also, people can go out on to... Uh, Dunkirk Access, go to YouTube, watch it on YouTube at any time. So that information will be there. Is there anything else that you're doing or that you think is important that we need to know as far as a voter for this election? Because we've got local elections. We've got county elections going on. We have federal elections going on. We have a lot of things happening here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, there is no question or concern that anybody should uh, hesitate in reaching out to the Board of Elections uh, about. If you go to votechautauqua.com, you'll see all our phone numbers and all of our email, and we're happy to answer these, and we encourage people. There is no stupid question. There is no bad question. We, we want people to be comfortable in the voting system. Uh, we work really hard at, at, uh, at making sure that people are, are, have a system that they can count on, and uh, as, as Brian and I always say, you know, that the next day, it won't, might not be the next day this year, but once the election results have been have have been announced and are announced, that's going to be something you can uh, depend that yeah, it's true, it's accurate, and right. we're working every day to make sure that happens. Right. So, so you know, you really feel confident that every vote will count. We're not going to we're not going to we're not going to uh, play any kind of games with anything. You know, we're going to not going to listen to all these myths and all these things that are going on well, out here. I think that. I'll play off your myths. Remember, um, when you're watching TV or you're online or you're doing something, remember those that information, those sources may have nothing to do with New York State, may have nothing to do with Chautauqua County, it may have nothing to do with our voting process. And our process is different than you know others, other 49 states, they do things somewhat differently. Um, so as you're listening to the information and you're, you're hearing it nationally or you're hearing it regionally, you know, Bring that question to the Stock County Board of Elections, and we can definitely guide you in the process to help educate every voter on any question you have about what we are going to do and how we're going to accomplish exactly what you said, which is the comfort level of knowing that we will do everything we can to make sure we count as many votes as possible in a timely fashion, and at the end of the day, have the results that everybody can buy into and say, yes, that's, that's exactly how the voters have wanted it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This has been very informative. I hope that they, that uh, if there are any other questions that I've missed, that uh, we, we, can, we can get to them at another time. You guys have been great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank all of you. Thank you for watching City Speaks. City Speaks is here for you, for the residents of this area, to let you know what's going on. And certainly voting this year is going to be critical. It's going to be very impactful. Whatever, you're, whatever you do, whatever you think, your vote will count. So be educated. Know the candidates. And vote. And please watch City Speaks Daily on Spectrum 1301 in Dunkirk at 3 and 10. Watch us on uh, YouTube by going to dunkirkaccess.com. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you like. Send an email to CitySpeaks at City of Dunkirk. Send a snail mail, City Speaks 342 Central Avenue, Dunkirk 14048. And thank you. Thank you for watching. And thank you, Brian. Thank you, Norm. Thank you for being Thanks here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you.